Okay, this video is going to show you how to miss about your gravity. Okay, so that's like standard gravity and then the more fancy gravity wells. Um, in order to show you this, I'm going to use my ball thing again. Um, so let's just run it and just show you what I'm messing with. And again, this is, don't just try and mimic what I'm doing. You should be making this work for you. So there's the balls floating around. I'm going to change the limit action to uh, wrap X bounce in the Y direction. Okay, so you can guess what that does or you might have seen it in the other video. Let's just show you, so bounce, 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 bounce. So the only top enough bounce in top and bottom. Right, so I'm going to turn gravity on, so I'm going to say gravity equals new well I think actually gravity let's just put gravity in the y direction we can do it in any direction we want um, in fact we can do it in a 2d vector if we wanted to but let's let's just do this okay I'm gonna turn off the y velocity for a minute so I'm just gonna comment that line out so these just move left and right Uh, running that, let's just see what the effect of that is. And again, you're gonna have to experiment. These aren't real gravity, these numbers. So you can see that the balls are bouncing, uh, dropping slowly, and then bouncing back up. But what you'll also see is that uh, they come back down because gravity is affecting them. Okay. Uh, we can make that more violent by making this number bigger. So let's make it 49. So a bigger number. And again, so you'll have to play to get the effect that you want. Okay. It's not the most amazing effect. Either. I'm just going to make it even higher. Let's try 109.81. <coughs> Excuse me. So just run that. So they're a bit more violently dragged down this time. There are the odd bugs with the gravity and limit boxes, um, but I can show you a way to get around that. Now. What we've got is that they're not losing any energy. Now in the real world you would lose energy every time you bounced. So we can mimic that by changing a setting called E. Okay, and this is specifies how much energy to lose every time we have a collision. So if we set that to 0.95, that tells us to keep put an F, remember it's a fraction, 95% of the energy. So you'll see the effect of that straight away. And again, these numbers you'll have to fiddle about with um, to get an effect. It's all about getting effects. Whether they're real effects or not is beside the point. It's what does the illusion give us. So you can see that what's happening is they're bouncing lower and lower. Now, I've kept 95% of the energy, so let's make it only keep 60% of the energy and see what the effect that has. There's uh, one other thing I'll show you, and that'll is um, friction in a sec. If I can remember how it works, I can never remember how it works. So eventually they stop bouncing because they've run out of energy. Now, what I can also do, I'll just turn that off a minute, mess about with my friction. So I can say S dot friction, and you'll see that. It says in the little helper there, zero is no friction, one is perfect friction. But you can put ridiculous numbers in, so I'm just going to add friction in and I'm going to say 0.5 F. Let's see what the effect of that is. Again, you're going to have to play about with this. And chuggy, chuggy, chuggy. So I, I'm not reducing the energy using the E, I'm just doing it with friction. And I've got the friction on 60%. Okay. 
gravity is still pulling at them. So again, this is a bit like the if you ever if you watch the video with the scaling, um, I eventually stopped them. They'll keep bouncing forever, to be honest. Um, so we could increase that. Let's put it on nine. And you'll find that gravity will keep pulling them because they'll keep stopping, but gravity will keep pulling them even though it's got a very high friction amount. Gravity is a bit of a pain. Okay, because even when bodies at rest, gravity is pulling on them, and we have to try and like stop that. There are various things you can do um, to attempt to do this. They don't always work, uh, which is why you sometimes in games fall through floors and things because gravity is a real pain. Okay, so that's that's normal gravity. So let's turn that back off. Right, I'm going to change, get rid of the friction. Oh, get rid of the friction. I'm going to change the thing back to limit box wrapping. Do wrap exact. Just make sure it's doing that, and then I'm going to show you the gravity wells. Run it, and I'll leave the velocity. I'm not <coughs> too fussed about the velocity. Right, gravity wells. We set these up independently. So at the top of my, above my subroutine, I'm going to put it for me. So here's my ball sprite. So where I created a random number generator in a previous life, um, I'm going to create a gravity well. So to say gravity well, and I prefix them with GV, and I'm just going to call it one equals new gravity well and then you say where on screen it is so I'm going to put this in the center of the screen so I'm going to say new vector 3 now it's three dimensional um, so you can have like 3d z effects um, but we're, we're not interested in z at the minute so we're going to put zero for that but the vector 3 is just three dimensional x y z so I'm going to have screen send Get all the screen center. So the screen center is 400, 300, and 0. Okay, so that's where the position of it is. And then I need to specify its mass in gigatons. So that's billions of kilograms. So I'm going to put it at 100 gigatons. Okay. Now, to, I can use that now for any sprite I want. So it's it's accessible. So in my ball sprite, I'm going to say s dot gravity well dot add gv1 okay and let's just run it and see what the effect of that is what a gravity well is it's a point mass so gravity is pulled towards that point thing objects are pulled towards that point now that's quite big <laughs> i'm going to reduce the power of it so i'm going to set it go back up to my gravity well and change it to 10 gigatons and again these are numbers that it's not a very accurate simulation of gravity because I wanted it to be fast. So you can see now that they're being pulled backwards and forwards. And you can get some quite weird effects. Okay. Um, let me just turn the Y velocity back on for this sprite. But you'll have to play with gravity and I'll, I'll show you something a bit cooler in a sec. So that's, that's gravity wells. Right, let's go back up to where I create my gravity well. I'm going to create another one. GV2, I'm going to call it. Just did a bit of copy paste. I'm going to put it at a different location on screen. 200, 500. And I'm going to make it size just a little bit different. Just only a little bit different. And then in my ball sprite, I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to add another gravity well. So now, those sprites are going to be pulled by two different point masses, which are going to compete. And you'll see you get some really weird effects. Okay. In fact, some of them are going ridiculously fast. I'm getting faster and faster and faster. And you've got to be careful. The gravity things sometimes do go a bit bonkers. So I'm going to reduce the power of them. See if we get a more reasonable effect. <clears throat> I'm just playing my numbers. Okay. 
let's turn wrapping off because that that's part of the problem they're getting like slingshotted so I'm actually gonna um, just turn comment out the viewport action and let's let's watch what happens now that's why they were, they were speeding up like mud and you sometimes get that effect so they're going off screen, but they're actually, the gravity wells are fighting to pull them back on screen. And you can have as many gravity wells as you want, but there's some nasty calculations going on when the gravity's on. So you don't want to overdo it, um, even though we're running on quad-core CPUs at college. They're only running in 32-bit mode instead of 64-bit mode, which doesn't help. But you can see that they're competing. Now I'm going to do a separate video on the next thing that I'm going to just quickly show you. But I'm going to just turn history on so you can see that working. So I'm going to history depth. So I'm in my balls right saying history depth equals 50. Uh, s dot history depth equals 50. Show. And I'm going to snap it 30 times a second, 30 frames. A second and let's just look at what that looks like when we run our code this will show you where the balls were previously so you can see this effect even nicer now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some uh, else to the history like I say I'll go through what these do clamp out I'm looking for in another video I just want to do it now just to illustrate the, um, the the effect of the gravity wells. So even though you can't see the gravity wells, you can actually still work out where they are in the by the way the sprites are moving. I'm gonna add one more gravity well. Cause I'm going a bit mad. So I'll copy and paste that one. Uh, I'm gonna make this a bit. One point one five something like that. Um, right, so the position I'm going to put this one in is at 600, 100. So, somewhere towards the top right order, and something stupid. Oh, didn't change the name. Copying and paste is not necessarily your friend. So, add the gravity well to the sprite. Add GV3. Okay. Let's see that. And that'll be the end of this vid because I'm getting fed up myself. But I do I do like the gravity wells, they're pretty cool. One thing you can do is you can start really messing about the gravity wells and position them where a sprite is. So you could have like I think that they do it in Burnout Crash. There's the uh, magnet mode where all the cars start coming towards you. And it's essentially the same thing that's happening here. But they're they're positioning the gravity well wherever your car sprite is. It's quite cool. Yeah, gravity wells quite cool. You can um, get quite nice, subtle, random wobble effects for your sprites using gravity wells. I think they're cool.